Endogenous pigmented lesions are a group of abnormalities that originate within the body tissues. They are primarily caused by bodily pigments, with melanin being the main contributor to most black or brown pigmentations. Today's video discusses a few important endogenous pigmented lesions and their characteristic features with an interesting case scenario. A 55-year-old female noticed a painless growth on her left anterior maxillary gingiva for three months. It started small and progressed gradually, extending to the palatal gingival margin. She had a tender, solitary left submandibular lymph node which was firm and fixed to the lower border of the mandible. Intraoral examination revealed a non-tender, bluish-black, pigmented, rough growth with an irregular periphery in the region of 2-1 and 2-2, displacing them. I suspected several possibilities, such as melanosis, melanocytic nevus, melanotic macule, melanoacanthoma, and malignant melanoma. A panoramic view revealed a radiolucent area with tooth displacement of 2-1 and 2-2. A biopsy confirmed the diagnosis of malignant melanoma. Let us first discuss malignant melanoma in depth. Oral malignant melanoma is more common in people over 50 and commonly affects the palate and gingiva, as seen in our case. These growths can be macular, plaque-like, or as in our patient, a mass. They may be well circumscribed or irregular. Their color varies between shades of brown, black, or blue pigmentation. Other signs can include ulcerations, pain, loose teeth, bone loss, numbness or tingling. On the facial skin, the mala region is a common site for melanoma. The clinical characteristics of cutaneous melanoma are best described by the ABCDE criteria, where A stands for asymmetry, B stands for border irregularity, C stands for color irregularity, D stands for a diameter greater than 6 mm. E stands for elevation. Now let us briefly discuss the list of possibilities we considered before confirming our diagnosis. Five types of melanosis require consideration here. These are drug-induced melanosis, smoker's melanosis, inflammatory melanosis, melanosis associated with Addison's disease, and melanosis associated with Cushing's syndrome. Let us begin with drug-induced melanosis. Unlike malignant melanoma, drug-induced melanosis presents as a flat discoloration without any nodules or swelling. Reviewing a patient's medical history often reveals the use of specific medications within weeks or months before the pigmentation appears. In most cases, the discoloration fades away within a few months after stopping the medication. Next is smoker's melanosis, which unlike malignant melanoma, always presents as a diffuse brown, flat and irregular pigmentation resembling a map. It commonly appears in the anterior vestibular maxillary and mandibular gingivae, buccal mucosa, lateral tongue, palate and floor of the mouth. The patient has a positive history of smoking. Moving on to inflammatory melanosis. It is a potential diagnosis in patients who also have oral lichen planus lesions. These lesions are flat, irregular and diffuse. The characteristic appearance of lichen planus, including Wickham striae, will be present alongside the pigmentation. Next, we have melanosis associated with Addison's disease. They present as diffused, and patchy hyperpigmentation of the mucosa. These patients exhibit generalized bronzing of the skin, unlike malignant melanoma cases. Typical clinical signs present such as weakness, fatigue, and depression. A serum cortisol level of less than 100 nanomoles per liter at 9 a.m. serves as a diagnostic marker for this condition. The final one in our list of melanosis pigmentation is Cushing syndrome. Here, specific systemic complications including weight gain and the characteristic moon face is seen. Pop quiz
The next pigmented lesion I considered was melanocytic nevus. These are always asymptomatic and remain smaller than 1 cm in size, unlike malignant melanoma. Once these lesions reach a certain size, their growth usually stops. They appear as solitary well-defined nodules or macules with brown or blue coloration. The hard palate is the most common location, followed by the buccal and labial mucosa and the gingiva. Next on our list was the melanotic macule. This is a benign lesion most commonly seen in the lower lip and gingiva. The key feature that differentiates it from malignant melanoma is its size, being smaller than 1 cm. It is well circumscribed, oval or irregular. Moving on to the final pigmented lesion on our list is melanoacanthoma. This lesion is always benign and involves any mucosal site. It is always asymptomatic, ill-defined, macular or papular. It mostly resolves by itself. A history of trauma and chronic irritation will be present. Eliminating the underlying cause minimizes the risk of recurrence. Let us now discuss the management of malignant melanoma. Oral malignant melanoma is associated with a very poor prognosis, especially when the lesion involves the palate and regional lymph nodes, as was our case. Therefore, though our patient underwent a wide excisional surgery of the lesion, followed by two cycles of chemotherapy, she failed to respond to it and eventually passed away. We have thus come to the end of this video. For more information about endogenous pigmentation, please watch our subsequent videos. Hope you had fun learning with us. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.